In this presentation, I wanted to touch on data visualization. Essentially, how do we create figures, bars, and charts? Now, the types of data that we have are very important in terms of the types of figures, charts, and graphs that we're able to construct, as well as some of the tables that we will also look at and some of the measures we can use too that we've already touched on in a bit more detail previously. Now, this table in front of you kind of breaks that down, and it's maybe something you can refer back to at a later time as well if you're looking for certain things to do maybe during your ClinDoc project, or again, maybe even during your assignment for this module, you might have this and might find it a bit useful. Now here um, in the first column, it mentions the types of variables that we're going to be using. Um, first off is the categorical kinds of data. So we've looked at that before when we have nominal or ordinal data. Now, if we would just have that one variable we're interested in, then we have the ability to do things like a frequency table, something you did back in exercise one. We have the ability to create pie charts and bar charts. Um, in terms of summarizing things in a number, we obviously have looked at the median and the mode types of things we can we can use to summarize in just a, a number as a I guess a way to visualize. If however we have a continuous, so an interval or ratio measure, we're a bit more limited in what we can look at. We can't really use those same techniques. So here we could obviously use the mean, something we looked at a couple of presentations ago, and the histogram, what we looked at in the previous presentation, where we could just get a number of a count in terms of individuals within different values. If we have categorical data as um, and we have two variables. Um, so rather than just looking at one on its own, we want to compare um, how you say, for example, we have groups of men and women. Uh, so we have sex as one of our variables. And then we have age groups as our other one. So we want to kind of look at those two and see, well, how many men do we have in these age ranges? How many women do we have in these age groups? And so for that, we can then build on the one-way frequency table and create what we call a two-way frequency table it's also known as a cross tab, and that's something we'll look at in a future presentation. In terms of a, a graph or a figure, we have the clustered bar chart as the option open to us. Again, builds on the bar charts, but breaks it down into a number of kind of smaller bar charts within the, the bigger picture. If we have both a continuous measure and a categorical measure, and um, so here, um, if we had sex still, but we had age, not as categories, but as in every single individual age, then we can still continue to do things like create histograms. And so we can do those for men and women separately. Or again, we have the ability to look at them kind of overlapping if we need to as well. So we have two continuous measures and we're looking to compare those. And that's when we're looking at doing what we call a scatter plot. Uh, you can also create a line chart through that, a line graph, or again, fit a best fit line through your scatter plot to kind of look at the relationship between two continuous variables. And so that's demonstrated on this very, uh, very simple slide. Um, I've created two um, kind of graphs here, which are basically scatter plots, but we've just put the best fit line um, in these two very simple plots. So here we have continuous measures in terms of income, the amount of mortgage someone has left to pay, and the age of a respondent. On the top graph, here we're looking at age against income, so we're comparing two continuous measures. And here we see what you might typically see is a positive association that as people age, their income goes up. Now, in the real world, that's not as simple as that. You know, it's, it's not quite as strict. And obviously, incomes will tend to go down as once people reach retirement uh, and move into older ages. As we get older, we would also hope that the amount of mortgage we've got left to pay decreases. Again, a very uh, big oversimplification. But typically, we would see that kind of negative association. And if we're visualizing things as well as running statistical tests, the visual format really tells us what's going on and helps us understand the stats models that we run. And that's something we'll look at again in a bit more detail later. When we have categorical data, then we have those other types of charts available to us again to show relationships. And in these two figures, we've got a pie chart and a bar chart. They're essentially using the same data and telling us the same story. In this case, we're looking at ethnicity within a sample. Here on the pie chart on the left hand side, we can see the group in red is predominantly the white uh, Caucasian people who have been in our sample. Then we have a group of, of black respondents and then a category that's been combined because of the small sample size and other in the blue color in front of you. The same, basically the, presenting the same data, just using a bar chart. Here we can see it on the right hand side where we can see the numbers, the frequency of white respondents, black respondents and other respondents. So you can sort of see that basically we can do the same thing, but it just uses slightly different charts. And it's just really a preference of what people would like to use. 
Obviously, one way you can improve both of these is to put more scales on them. So within the pie chart, you could have more of a percentage could be added in there. Or again, you could have the frequency as well. Likewise, in the bar chart here, we don't we can see roughly where the numbers are. But again, we don't know anything about percentages, which is something we could present. And we don't know the exact number. So we could add things like that into our graphs just to make them a bit more relevant to a couple of things just in terms of terminology. I think I've already used some of this terminology before when we've looked at other charts in previous lectures, and I'll use it kind of going forward as well. It's just to remember that we have the two axes typically in a graph, a figure. We have the horizontal axis. So um, in this case, we're looking at the race of the respondents here, um, this horizontal x-axis. And then we have the vertical y-axis, which here is count, so the number of people in the sample. And so typically we'll hear people refer to uh, the x-axis and the y-axis in a figure. Also, when you use SPSS and other software, um, they often will refer to the x-axis and the y-axis. And that just is a reminder of where we put certain variables and how they'll display. Um, so just something to, again, have in the back of your mind if you've not come across those terms before. So not too much to worry about, hopefully, in that presentation. Um, the next stage is to move on to exercise four and have a little play around yourself with the data and create some graphs and charts um, and then kind of moving on to the next session once you've managed to do that.